Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about genetic engineering in more detail. So as I said, genetic engineering is going to be very interesting because here we talk about mixing and matching of genes. Now, again we come back to the same topic that what makes organisms different because when we talk about genetic engineering we are going to talk about genes now when we talk about genes that is basically exchange or transfer of genes between organisms it is important to know that how are different organisms different so that we are able to understand that why actually we are uh, making this transfer of genes so as I mentioned before that the difference in different organisms is due to the different sequence in the DNA that is the different sequence of the nitrogenous bases in DNA. So sequences in DNA decide the organism's unique characteristics. So if you talk about any characteristic, whether you talk about the glowing characteristic of jellyfish at night, that is due to a specific sequence of DNA, or you talk about the long neck of a giraffe, that is also due to some specific genes. That is, the genes are nothing but a group of sequence of the nitrogenous bases in DNA. So that is why you would have seen that if you compare a human being, if you look at a human being, where are the sequences of DNA present? It is present inside the cell, inside which you have the nucleus, wherein you have the chromosomes and that is where you have the genes. So the, inside the chromosomes you actually have DNA and in the DNA a particular section of DNA codes for a specific protein. So this is where your DNA is located. So if you look at the structure of DNA more closely, this is how it pairs up. Let us suppose if all the yellow lines are A and the purple ones are T. So A will always be with T, C will always be with G. Again, A will always be with T. Again, here G will always pair up with C and so on. So this is how the sequencing is. Now for different organisms, the sequences vary and that is why they have different characteristics. Now when the sequence varies, this particular portion of DNA might code for a particular protein. Now when the sequence changes, the protein which gets synthesized also changes. Now when the protein changes, the characteristic of the organism also changes. And that is how the organisms turn out to be different due to difference in their DNA sequences. So if you compare different organisms, let us suppose if you take the example of human beings. Now if you compare human beings with other animals like a mouse or a dog or a microorganism like a bacteria or a plant or a jellyfish. So human beings are completely, I mean there are a lot of differences there between the two. Why is it? Because the difference in the DNA sequences is a lot more. So the more the difference in the DNA sequences, the more would be the difference in the look and feel of the organisms. But if you compare a human being with other human beings, now do you think that all human beings look similar? They do not look exactly similar, but there are features which are common in all of them. For example, if you compare a bunch of uh, human beings, all of them have got two eyes, two hands, two legs. So the basic characteristics are the same but still there are unique characteristics in each of them and that is why we are always able to identify a particular human being. None of us look exactly similar except for the identical twins. So even if you compare yourself with your father, so there might be certain similarities but you are not identical. So why is it that the similarity between all the human beings are more? That's because the DNA sequences is more similar amongst all the human beings. Now the question is why there is some uniqueness involved? That's because 99% of the base pairs in human DNA are similar in all of them. So that is why they share all the basic features same. But there is 1% difference. Now this 1% difference can also make huge changes. Due to that 1% of difference, we see, we see so much of differences amongst all of us. But that 1% of difference is also significant because when you talk about the number of base pairs, one DNA contains 3 billion of base pairs. So when you take 1% of such a huge number, so that 1% itself is quite huge. So 
since the 1% is quite huge, so that means the difference is also quite more. So due to that difference of 1%, we see that even all the human beings are not exactly identical to each other. So they have differences and that is why each of them have a uniqueness and they have an identity. So this is why different organisms are different. So now the question is why genetic engineering? Now, as we saw in the previous slides, that genetic engineering is all about engineering with genes of different organisms. Now, why do we want to do this? Why do we want to uh, take out or extract genes from one organism and then put it inside another organism? Why do we want to do all these engineering with the genes? That's because the traits which are beneficial to an organism and population, they are desired. So some of the traits, some of the characteristics of an organism are desired. So when I say desired, these traits are desired by whom? The traits are basically desired by human beings because human beings have brought into picture the concept of genetic engineering because who does this engineering with the genes? They are the human beings. So why human beings do this? For their own benefit. So any trait of a particular organism which turns out to be beneficial to human being, they want that trait to be expressed over and again in the population of that organism. And in order to ensure that, they have put in place the concept of genetic engineering. So I will give you a very common example. Let us take the example of a cat. Now. Let us suppose there are two varieties of domestic cats which are available. One is the furry cat and the other one is a less haired cat. Now human beings have observed that with this furry cat, if you have furry cat around you, what happens is the fur keeps on, the, the cat keeps on shedding its furs. And these furs contain allergens because of which human beings tend to suffer from allergies. We have already spoken about allergies in our previous lesson. So the furry cat can become a source of allergen to human beings. Whereas if there is a cat which has got exactly the same behavior like a furry cat, just that it is less haired. So you do not have a lot of furs over its body. So you are no less probable or you are less prone to allergies. So that means less haired cat is something which is more preferred by human beings. Now here between these two cats which gene differs? So the first cat has a gene which gives more fur to the animal whereas the second cat has a gene which gives less hair to the animal. So now the human beings will think that okay what if we try to extract the gene for less hair and insert it inside the body of all the cats so that most of them now it is not sure that even if you insert the gene inside a cat the all the progeny will be less haired. Now by now you all know genetics. So it, it is just that by, by doing this, by doing this sort of genetic engineering, you just increase the probability of having more less haired cat. So that's all you can do. But even if you are able to do that, maybe currently if out of 10 cats only 2 of them are less haired, maybe later the probability will increase. That is maybe out of 10, maybe 6 of them will be less haired. So that was something which was desirable by human beings. So with this purpose in mind, the entire concept of genetic engineering came into picture. So that human beings are able to produce organisms with their desirable traits. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.